Good evening and thanks for joining us. We begin with some breaking news tonight. An extremely controversial photo has surfaced on Twitter. It's from the state hockey game between Grand Forks Red River High School and Fargo Davies. Grand Forks police resolved what appeared to be a potentially dangerous suicidal situation on the northwest end of town this afternoon. A heated discussion over sexual orientation tonight left some city leaders and community members fuming over their beliefs. There are several laws taking effect today in Minnesota that you might not be aware of. The deadline nears at the White House and on Capitol Hill to reach a fiscal cliff deal. A judge sets bail at $1 million for a Fargo man accused of murdering his wife. This after he reported her suicide just three days ago. Now we have some breaking news just coming into the studio. The United States House has passed the fiscal deal. According to the New York Times, they're uh, averting tax increases and spending cuts. Now there was a lot of uh, work that went into this today moving forward to pass that deal. Reporter Karen Travers has more of that work from Washington. Again, the deal has just passed and so now the measure is on its way to President Barack Obama for his signature and a political triumph less than two months after he secured re-election. Authorities in Beltrami County want your help finding a robbery suspect in an ongoing investigation. Local and national leaders believe building the Keystone XL pipeline could cut down on North Dakota's gas prices dramatically. But there's no way to know for sure that the pipeline would help cut prices at the pump. Right now, prices in Grand Forks are higher than the national average of $3.77 a gallon. That's up 15 cents compared to the same time last week. An emergency shelter in Grand Forks last night took on six times more people than expected. Grand Forks police resolved what appeared to be a potentially dangerous suicidal situation on the northwest end of town this afternoon. The force had all hands on deck. The situation adds to the spike of mental health issues over the holidays. WDAZ's Melanie Orleans was on scene today. She's live with more. Mel? North Dakota Senator Heidi Heitkamp met with local leaders today to discuss the importance of programs funded by the Violence Against Women's Act. Well, the oil boom and high agricultural prices have changed North Dakota's fortunes in the past decade. North Dakota was losing particularly its young people in the 1990s. Despite those fortunes, there's talk about the largest failure in North Dakota oil drilling since the 1980s. The Chesapeake Company drilled eight wells last year, hoping to find oil in the southern edge of the Bakken. But that failed. Walking, it's a simple task most of us never really think about, except for the man you are about to meet. For nearly three years, one Bismarck resident has had to think about every step until now. Reporter Sarah Gustin shows you how advanced technology is giving a gift to a man who didn't know if he would ever walk again. Less than a week after Grand Fork's largest concert, tickets went on sale for another big show at the Alaris Center. Yeah, and 17,000 tickets for the Jason Aldean show are expected to sell out and help keep the place operating in the black. WDAZ's David Schwab reports. In addition, the Alaris Center has been busy this week, Monday night serving as a Red Cross shelter for stranded travelers, then a crop expo, and today the man show started. We could do worse for a late winter weekend forecast. We'll say it's about 40 degrees <laughs> warmer, it feels like it anyway, than <laughs> last week. Storm Tracker meteorologist John Wheeler will be in next with his full forecast. The flood outlook for Devil's Lake shows that spring runoff may raise lake levels at least a foot and a half. North Dakota House takes a first step in protecting your privacy when it comes to the use of drones. So last night at 10, we showed you some very brave UND students who joined in on the Harlem Shake internet craze. They were dancing in blizzard conditions, some of them topless outside the Ralph Engelstead Arena. If you weren't aware of the dance trend taking social media by storm before, this video brings a whole new element. <laughs> this is at SeaWorld in San Antonio. It has nearly two and a half million YouTube views already uploaded just three days ago. I can't get over that walrus. You might be sick of the song, but the videos, I guess, just keep getting more interesting. Who are we going to see tomorrow night? We'll have to stay tuned and watch. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel's next. Have a good night.